Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial for the Create mod in Minecraft in which we're going to be building this fully operational windmill that you can see behind me. And this little windmill operates exactly as you would expect it to. We are gathering up our wheat and our seeds. We are passing them automatically through. These are going to get then crushed up so our wheat is going to become flour and our seeds are going to get composted into bone meal. This little design also has a tiny little extra field just off to one side, so if you want to gather just some wheat without it sort of being crushed up, you want to feed it to the cows or whatever, then you can do so. So we'll do a little tutorial of how you can build up this contraption for yourself as well. It's going to run in two parts, so part one we're going to have a look at all of the mechanics, and in part two we'll do the aesthetics. Okay, so here we have exactly the same windmill in my creative world, and we can see how it's working. We've got the windmill up there, obviously the farm which is just gathering our wheat and our seeds which is then going to go into the mill and we'll cover each of these three components separately. Okay so first of all let's take a little look at the windmill itself. Literally all you need to make a windmill is a windmill bearing, kind of obvious, something to go in the middle, some kind of block that you like the look of, and then eight sail blocks. These can either be the full sails or the ones that are just made out of sticks. And to make all you need to do is pop your bearing down Facing up, we'll go with first, and place your central point right in the middle there. You'll notice immediately that it's got this sticky patch in the center, so that allows things to stick to it, and it'll, as the windmill turns, it'll turn the middle as well. And then from there, we can attach our sail blocks. So we'll just arrange them like this to begin with. You'll notice it's very handy, lets you know where you're going to be placing your next block. And once you've got eight sail blocks on there, you can right-click onto the windmill bearing itself, and it'll start to turn around. In this case, extremely slowly because that is one thing about windmills is that the number of sails that you have on them will influence how quickly they turn so you can see that this one is turning very slowly whereas mine up there is turning quite quickly and that's because there are 68 sails on that one up at the top and obviously they also don't have to be vertical like this that one's a horizontal and so same as we can just delete all these ones away fill her up a little bit Then we can place our windmill so that it's facing out, pop our central block in the middle and then just surround it again with our eight sails, which can be in absolutely any configuration. They don't have to be all neat looking or anything like that. Even something <laughs> there's absolutely no aerodynamics at all should still be working. And as we click, you can see it still goes around. Create doesn't really care whether you're making something that looks like a windmill, so long as it's got those eight sail blocks on there, it's going to turn. But what if you've built your windmill and you're now looking at it and thinking, wow, that is one ugly windmill, I wish I could take it down and start again. Well, luckily you can. You can simply right-click on the windmill bearing again. It will stop and snap back to the original position that it was in when you built it. Then you can just remove your sails and start again. So instead of having a strange odd looking mix, let's just pop our eight little sails going around the edge in a rather more sensible display of a cross. And now we click our windmill again, it sets off, it looks like something a little bit more respectable. Okay, so now that we've got our nice little windmill, we need to give it a job to do. And to build our little farm, we're going to be using a mechanical bearing, which looks very similar to the windmill bearing. It's just got a brown band around it rather than a grey one. And the big difference is, while the windmill rotates and outputs power, you put power into the mechanical bearing in order to make it rotate. So we'll just pull up a little bit so we can see underneath it. And you can see there's a little shaft input just there, so that's where it needs to be powered from. And on top of this, we can just build our little farm. For that, we're going to use some linear chassis, five little mechanical harvesters, a couple of portable storage interfaces, a chest to store things in, and we're gonna need some glue to stick it all together. So what we can do is we can take our little chassis, we can pop those on top. You'll notice that it's sticky on top of this little bearing so that when it turns around, it'll turn around whatever's stuck to the top of it as well take our little chassis and we'll just put them off to one side. One, two, three, four, and five. And then in front of those, we will place our mechanical harvesters. And the really nice thing about these harvesters is that they go round, 
they will collect the crops for you and then they will plant seeds in their wake as well. So you don't need deployers or anything like that in order to do any planting. As you can see, perfectly demonstrated just there, it planted the seed too after it harvested. So, once we've reached this stage then, so we're going to be able to be harvesting everything, we need somewhere to store that. We're going to need a little chest just there, and we're going to need a portable storage interface facing outways. Just like so. And that is what will allow us to transfer anything that gets stored into this chest into the next machine, which is going to be our crushers. For now though, everything here is in place, but we have a slight problem, which is that as soon as this bearing starts to turn, it's going to leave this chest behind because it's not part of the contraption at the moment. So we're going to glue it all together. To do that, you just need to right click where you want it to start. You'll hear the loud squidgy slime noise. And then you can draw this out to decide where you want to start sticking things. We just want to move it across so that everything is involved in a big green box around, as you can see. Just like that. So you can see how everything is part of it, including the chest. We right click again. It makes the sticky noise and now everything that is in there is all stuck together. Don't worry about including the harvesters in there. They'll get shoved along in front. And at this point, that is literally everything you need to do in order to create this part of the farm. We just need to get power from our windmill to our little harvester. So what we'll do is we'll just remove this block, a vertical gear, pop that into the back there so you can see that our power is now transferred here so that we can take it down. We need to get it underneath here. We can also pop a little shaft just there, remembering that this is going to have to have farmland going around it in order to give these something to harvest. Another little vertical gearbox from there, and then we're just going to link the two up. Once they come pretty much to a corner point, pop another little vertical gearbox in, and there we go, we're moving around. Ah, but we've got a little bit of a problem. This is quite clearly going in the wrong direction right now. We should be pushing those mechanical harvesters, not pulling them. And so, in order to fix which direction we're going in, we'll just pop in another gear somewhere. It can go just there. There we go. And as you can see, because they're now being pushed in the right direction, all the little mechanical harvesters are spinning, where they're going to be raking and sowing, or whatever you do when you're harvesting crops, and it's all ready to go. Okay, right, so we've done two components of our machine. The last thing we need to do is crush our wheat into flour when we start actually harvesting it. For that, we're just going to need these few bits and pieces here that you can see in this chest. I'll take some of them out with me, and then we will go and set up this portable storage interface first. So what we need to do is we need to set this up so that it is perfectly in line with the portable storage faces it comes around. They have to work in pairs with each other, and you need to have a one block gap in between the two. It can't work on a diagonal, so it's going to have to be either directly north, south, east, or west. I mean, in this case, we'll be working on it in this sort of direction. So we know that it's five wide, one, two, three, four, five, away from that bearing, and we're going to need to miss one to give it the space in between to work. So underneath this bearing, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, miss a space, and from here is going to be where we are building. So we should pillar up a little bit. We should be able to see him as he comes around to make sure that we're missing that block in between the two. Yep, they are exactly one block apart. Okay, so we'll just pop our little storage face in there. And they need to be facing into each other with this little sort of porthole aspect that you can see just there. On the back of your little portable storage interface, you will want to place an andesite funnel so that the items that it picks up can be dropped out. And then we're going to come back down the bottom and we're going to place just a little run of 10 building blocks, just running out like so. And this is just to give us something to build against, it's something to push the uh, shafts against. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going to build up a little pattern of shafts running along here so that we can place our belts down. So first thing we're going to do is against this first block here, we're going to place one shaft, then we're going to skip two, then we're going to place two, then we're going to skip one, we're going to place one shaft down, and then we're going to skip another two, and we're going to place two shafts down, and then we're going to place one more, building up a little bit of a pattern of shafts, as you can see just there. Then we're going to take our belt, and we're going to run the first one from this first shaft right the way across to the first area, 
of this little tufa that we've got here, so ignore this one, that little shaft there on the end. Then we're going to place our second belt just like so. Then we're just going to build up a little tiny bit more of building blocks on this side. So we'll just do a little tiny staircase, like so. And then we'll pop a shaft up at the top, and then we're going to run a belt in between the two. And so long as that's perfectly diagonal, it should be able to easily stretch just between them. And from there now, we can start building up all of the bits and pieces that we need on these belts in order to actually crush down our wheat. First thing we're going to do is we're going to skip these first two blocks that you see here, and we're going to place a chest. Just there on the third block, and one next to it to make it a double, so it should be over this space that you've left just there. On the back of that, we're going to place some brass funnels. Now, brass funnels are a little bit more expensive than the andesite ones, but they have a very useful function, which is that we can put filters on them. So we're just going to pop both of those on the end. Ignore that there, he'll get knocked off later on. And then we're just going to put an andesite funnel on the front. Just there, so it's going over this belt, so that everything's going to go into the chest. From there, we can then skip a block. We're going to need a mill. <laughs> then we're going to fill this belt up a little bit. But if you just skip that block, you can see just there, and we're going to place it on the next one along. This little gap here is so that we can place an andesite funnel going into our mill and another one coming off the end. Then we're going to place another chest. So we're going to place it so that it is over the end of both of these two belts. We just pop on there and there. And then we're going to place andesite funnels on both of these. And then from the back of that, we're going to need another one of our brass funnels. Here we go. So you can see here, what we've done is we've created a little system whereby our wheat can come in. It's going to come in with seeds as well, because you get both of them when you crush down the plants. They're going to go into this chest. We're going to split them off so that the seeds go straight into the chest and the wheat is going to get crushed up on its way through. The seeds can then be filtered out and they're going to get composted. So we're going to need to place a little composter just here. What we'll do is we'll just go and fetch one. I think composters live in decorative. They are. Just pop that one there. And now we need to have a little andesite funnel going into this composter. So what you have to do, if you crouch down next to it and then jump like so, you can place it down on top. And if you look up at your funnel, you should see a little triangle there and it is pointing into your composter. If it's not pointing into it and it's going up, replace it and try again. Or you can switch it around with a wrench. From there, you can knock out this little block that was never supposed to be there pot down a chest and then put a hopper going into your chest. This way all the seeds are going to come along, they're going to go straight into that funnel, get composted, and the bone meal is going to go into the chest for us. And that is everything set up that you need. All we need to do now with this is actually power the thing and put in some filters. And the first thing that you'll notice is that there are two different types of filters for you to choose from. And in this case we only need to have the standard filter, not the brass ones. And you'll need to just set it to take either wheat or seeds to begin with. So for this one, I'm going to set this one to seeds just by clicking some seeds into any one of these slots. So that's to say seeds is something that you're interested in. And if you look down here, these are your allow and deny lists. So we're allowing. We want this to allow seeds to run through it. So if we tick that one, then we can place that filter just on there because we want the seeds to come out of this chest run along this belt straight into this chest and not get interfering with this mill because they won't be able to be milled up, they'll just block it. So we need them to bypass that one. But we do want the seeds to come out of this one as well, so we'll pop a little filter on there too. We want them to go up this belt into this filter so that they can be composted. And then that just leaves the wheat which we want to go in here. You can't just leave it blank, otherwise it'll bring out seeds and wheat, so you're going to have to make sure that you put a filter on that one. And exactly the same as before, we'll just take the seeds out and we will pop some wheat in instead. Settings can stay the same, we're still allowing it to go through. Click OK and we will just pop it onto there. So now all of our wheat is going to go into the mill. And from here now, we just need to get everything powered up. So if we just run round the back, we can just knock out a couple of these blocks. We've got two little shafts there sitting next to each other. We're going to need some encased chain drives for those. Just pop an encased drive there and there. This means that everything's going to be running in the same direction. If we look on this side of the mill, we can knock out that block. There's that little shaft that we put in that was one of the random looking extra ones. And for that, we're just going to need a vertical gear and a little cog. Pop the vertical gear against there and then the little cog on top. So that's going to be able to power our mill for us. 
And the last thing that we need to do now in order to get everything working is get everything powered from our little windmill over there. So we can take power from this little gear. The only thing is, we're not, we're not really in line with being able to take power. We need it to come to the side just here. So we'll just pop a little gear underneath it. Put those ones there back. Now, easiest thing for me to do would be to put a little shaft onto there and onto here, and then I could just run a belt in between them. And now everything is working, if exceedingly slowly in this case. Remembering that because these mills are dictated by how fast its sails are, how many sails it's got on there, then everything is running very, very slowly at the moment. So we could do with speeding this up just a tad. For that, we won't use a belt, we'll remove it, and instead we'll use some cogs. So what we'll do is we'll grab hold of a horizontal gearbox, like so, and then we'll just do the usual way of speeding things up. To do that, we're going to need to go with a nice big cogwheel, to a small cogwheel, pop a shaft on him, big cogwheel, to a small cogwheel. And now, going at twice the speed. So from there, we can bring that one along. And then pop another little horizontal gearbox. Have a look, and ah, oh, how surprising, everything's going the wrong way. That's fine. Just pop another gearbox next to it. Now it should be going the right way. Very good. And this is fine in terms of speed. You might be looking at that and thinking, oh my goodness, but it's so slow. That's fine. This is not exactly the biggest farm in the universe. It is something that is just going to tick over in the background for us. Okay, so I have given our little harvester some farm area to work with. I've planted some wheat for it so that we can see how things are working. So as you can see, all of our wheat is falling straight out of the funnel. That is then going into this little chest. From there, it is going straight into our mill and it is getting turned into flour. And any seeds that come through as well, they are going to go on this little belt that you can see here, bypassing this mill, and they're going to go straight into this chest. From there, the seeds are then taken out by this filtered funnel. They're going to go straight up and get composted, leaving just our nice flower building up in the chest there. And there's our bone meal starting to come in too. But though that is all of the different mechanical components that you need just to make a fully functioning windmill in the Create Mod for Minecraft. And as you can see, it's relatively simple to build. By far the most expensive thing is these little brass funnels, just because you have to make brass for them. Everything else is really quite easy and it's all very early game. But this was just the mechanical component. Whereas next time we'll take a look at all of the aesthetic sides of a design and how you can incorporate them into a build. And I'll give you all the information you need so that you can make the same little windmill that I've made, just in case you happen to want to. For now though, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, I'm going to say bye bye, and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye bye!